Campaigns for president making their way to the Badger State, a primary election next week, and new polling on the issues in Wisconsin. CBS updates Emily Fan and West Politics editor J.R. Ross break it down in tonight's Capital Connection. Eau Claire was in the national spotlight this week as they had a big visits from the candidates. That was Vice President Kamala Harris, who formally introduced her running mate, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz, to Wisconsin voters. Meanwhile, there was some counter-programming just up the road with GOP Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance holding a dueling event to try and talk about his message. Now there, he knocked Harris for not taking questions from the media, where Vance did from a lot of local and national media. But, you know, typical talking points at that Vance event, uh, hitting her on immigration and the economy. Meanwhile, at the Eau Claire rally, it was a very just different tone in general. You know, I was there on the ground, of course, similar talking points, uh, but it was the energy that was the big uh, difference there, JR. There was about a little bit over 12,000 people there, crowds uh, that I haven't seen since going back to 2016 during Trump rallies when he was selling out arenas um, back in the day. Uh, and it's just a different reset in the presidential race. And enthusiasm is on Democrat side right now, but what we've talked about before is whether they can keep that up for the next three months. Look, the, the count has been compressed. So normally Kamala Harris would be out there for a year, really kind of introducing herself to voters. This is now, and yes, we know who she is. She's the vice president, but this is her time to be in the spotlight as the person at the top of the ticket. She's racing to define herself before Trump does. We're seeing new ads in Wisconsin that talk about her and border promises, hiring more border patrol agents. Uh, for Tim Walls, his introduction to voters in Wisconsin. Yes, he's right next door in Minnesota, but we don't really know him very well. So they're trying to define themselves before Trump defines them as a crazy liberal in Trump's words or Tim Walls with like his record with the National Guard. Likewise, J.D. Vance, he's been kind of a, not a net positive for the ticket so far for Trump. They're trying to find him as well before Democrats will find him as somebody who's out of the mainstream. It's just the race has been reset. To your point, enthusiasm is back for Democrats because they were so low with Biden because they felt like they were on an evident path toward defeat. Now there's hope. And hope breeds enthusiasm, it breeds donations, it breeds energy. And so they've got hope on their side. But can you sustain that? for what's essentially a 90-some day sprint that's only anything I've seen in politics in my career. Right, and what Republicans are calling this time period is the honeymoon phrase. Of course, it was just a matter of weeks ago that President Joe Biden dropped out of the race, passing the torch onto the vice president, and they believe that this will energy will dwindle at some point, giving them a window to basically try to capitalize on it. And that is yet to be seen, right? We don't think this momentum is going to die down, but you just never know. I mean, it's still only August. We still have a few more months to go until November, um, so that'll be definitely be something we watch for. Um, talking about just polling lately too, we had the latest Market Law School poll come out. No big surprise there with the head-to-head -head matchup between Harris and Trump, neck and neck, basically a statistical tie because there's just a one percentage point difference between registered voters and likely voters. Um, also want to talk about too, just about the issues, which I thought was a little interesting. Um, for a very long time, for the past, you know, I would say four months, uh, border security and immigration were the top two issue most important to voters. Abortion policy was number three. Now those two have flipped flopped. Number one has always been the economy. I don't think that's ever going to change until November. Um, but that just kind of goes to show of what people I talked to on the ground this week is that the messaging from Democrats on reproductive rights could be working, but also more are in tune now. More people are turning on the TV, read the news because Joe Biden's no longer on the ticket. The thing that I took away from it, talking to people was the enthusiasm bump for Democrats. Uh, more than 8% now are enthusiastic with 60 some percent back when Biden was still on the ticket in June. That's a big thing for Democrats to have that kind of enthusiasm out there. And a word of caution to Democrats who feel really giddy right now, for all the energy, you're basically back to even. Uh, Joe Biden was even with Donald Trump in late June. Now that was before the debate performance was widely panned. Um, and you look at the trajectory though, in that poll, uh, they asked, if Biden's still in, how would you vote? It was 47 Trump, 42 Biden. So you saw where he was headed. So that again, but for all the excitement, energy, we're basically deadlocked even the presidential race in Wisconsin, right. like we always are. Uh, let's also just uh, look ahead to next week. If you don't know, there is going to be a, a primary election held on Tuesday. Uh, first, let's just start real quick with the constitutional amendments. What they would both do would amend the state constitution to restrict the governor's power to spend federal funds. This comes out of the COVID-19 pandemic when Governor Tony Evers has had sole discretion to spend billions of dollars to try and help the state rebuild um, from a very scary time, I would say. Um, their argument is that, you know, if the next, you know, flood or emergency happens, they want the governor 
governor to do that, not have to go through the legislature. Um, but basically, if these were approved, that would take away the governor's ability to do that and have give the legislature some input on how that money is spent going forward. There's this kind of subtext happening here. Uh, $3.5 million raised by those opposing the amendments. I've heard about about a quarter million dollars being spent by those who support the amendments. The big money on the Democratic side is because we see Republicans increasingly going toward amendments when governors vetoes things they want to do. Um, we saw this spring, they got through an amendment to ban the use of private money elections and to limit who can perform election functions uh, at polls and that kind of stuff. Democrats feel like, okay, they keep doing this. This is our chance to organize, get money behind it, and try and message it so we can stop that effort because going forward, they're worried, well, that Republicans keep going to referendum on things they can't get through Governor Evers and then put it in the Constitution per permanently, essentially. So it's going to be kind of a test, a trial run. Can they message it the right way with the money and knock this one down? Uh, another race that we're also looking at in Milwaukee County is a rematch between Representative Lakeisha Myers and Representative Dora Drake. Now, Dora Drake won the last time around, but they have to be on the ballot again to seek a full term uh, once January comes. So Drake won last time with more than 60% of the vote. She's had superior resources that's continued through to this rematch. People I've talked to feel like she has an edge in that race on Tuesday. And we're also looking at uh, uh, Senator Knodel, who's now looking to go back in the assembly up against uh, Janelle Branchen. So that one, Branchen has been pushed a number of things about the elections in 2020, often uh, without foundation, I, I guess I would say. Like, this is a race where you have Janelle Branchen, who has been a thorn in the side of assembly leadership, especially Speaker Robin Boss. Dan Knodel is no moderate in stretch of the imagination, but is more of a quote unquote team player. We're seeing spending by establishment Republicans on Knodel's behalf, hoping to knock out Branch and push her out of the caucus to make life easier for leadership. All right, we'll have much more coverage on how those races go next week. Thanks so much for joining us.